In October, tennis fever ran high in Singapore, where some of the world's top-ranked women players battled it out at the BNP Paribas WTA Finals. Ten days of world-class tennis, entertainment, and celebrity glamour wowed the fans and captured media attention on and off the courts. It's also game, set, match for WTA. Scoring big time with record attendance of 168,000 fans. The largest showing in the past five years since Singapore started hosting the event. A sign perhaps that tennis is indeed stretching boundaries in Asia Pacific. Japan's new darling, Naomi Osaka, has been stealing the limelight. For me, being Japanese and stuff, I think playing in Asia is really amazing. There's like a different like vibe you get here. Then um, I always look forward to coming here. And I see how it grows and it's amazing to see all the progress. I think the growth of um, some of the Asian, Asian players, the huge success of Nishikori, of Lena, and now of Naomi Osaka, this will make tennis uh, so much more popular. Even from the day we started the WTA back in 1973, uh, actually in 1970 with the original nine, when we, you know, the birth of women's professional tennis, one of our dreams was to be global and we knew Asia would be a huge part of that in the future because Asia has such potential. <laughs> In 2019, the WTA Finals is moving again to Shenzhen, China. A relocation that could really get the games into the swing of things. Offering big prize money of $14 million, double that of Singapore's. Making it the richest tennis tournament outside the Grand Slams. Chinese real estate giant Gemdale won the bid for Shenzhen to host the WTA Finals for 10 years in a deal said to be worth up to $1 billion. This has solidified um, the investment we've made into China and I think is showing the marketplace we're here to stay. With the finals going there, we'll have eight events in mainland China, which is, which is a, a large number. Most of the year-end circuit is going to be in, in Asia. China now has, uh, I believe, four players in the, in the top 100. Uh, another 15 to 16 players in the top 300. And, and I think that's absolutely wonderful and it's showing that there is a pathway in this great sport for young women. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.